Well, I'm going to go ahead and get us started by doing a little screen share here. And just so you all know where you're at, this is the joint photography SIG and JCC RA chat. And we're going to focus on Kansas beauty in all seasons. And we've got about four presenters, myself included. And um, I'm going to in intersperse mine in between. So if we run out of time, we can drop the end of mine. So I thought we'd start out with um, on a cold day, a picture of uh, a sunny summer or an overcast summer, actually. Wow. This was out. Um, this is out at the uh, Kill Creek Trail, mm -hmm. uh, Kill Creek Park. And I guess the reason I, I really chose this one is I, I love the dark uh, sky moving in. The, uh, evident, there was a storm moving in, but it hadn't hit close enough to uh, obscure the, the brightness of the, I assume they're daily, daisies of some sort. They belong uh, to sunflower families. They're sunflowers. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Native well, my sun. wife said, my wife said, if I said they were daisies, someone would correct me. So thank you very much. <laughs> well, you know, the native sunflowers are the daisy shape. Uh, it's hybridized when they got the big heads for the, the seeds for the sunflower. Oh. Hmm. So these are older than the ones that have the big oh, heads. Wow. They're well, beautiful. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to have to keep coming back to the JCC chats because I learn something every, every time I have one of these things. So. Is this where that observation tower is out there? Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Has anybody and, uh, crawled up it yet? I haven't gone up to the, the tower, but it, I haven't it was either. Open. It was open when we were there. <laughs> we were kind of, kind of planning it for a, a another a later trip because this one, this hike, we wanted to hit as much of the trails as, as we could, and uh, um, we got lost. So we spent about two hours, we plan on doing a, a one hour trail hike and we ended up being gone for two hours, but, uh, but it was enjoyable. We had a great lunch afterwards, so. You know, you can walk around the lake. So kind of a narrow path on that south side. Right, right. Well, we were trying to break off into more of the um, uh, more of the you know rough rustic trails and so um, we actually went back the second time with a map and, and did much better as far as not getting lost and this is on the um, Mill Creek Streamway trail um, and I just I just like these um, I knew what they were at one point I can't think of it is that honey is that honey circle no, the red berries are American. Uh, Is it honeysuckle? American dogwood. I no, it's not honeysuckle. Okay. American dogwood. See. Is it elderberry? I don't think it's elderberry. I don't think so. Uh, it's, but I, it's American whatever dogwood. they are, I like the look of them. Maybe I don't have the. So, so how do they taste? <laughs> I mean, we can try them. I think they're bird food. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm. Well, when when I was a kid, and we would go hiking, we'd go to you know a church camp and go hiking off into the woods, and we run across these. And my cousins always called them chokeberries. You might be doing right. And I told my wife that I don't think that's a, was a technical term. I think it was more of a pragmatic term. <laughs> no. Well, well, back east we have an edible berry that we call choke cherry. And oh, there's like okay. little tart, little tart berries with a seed yeah. in them. And they're edible. Yeah. No, Jerry, it it never died. And syrup is wonderful. Say again, Helen. Choke cherry, syrup, and jam are wonderful. Oh. And, again, and yep. you can eat choke cherries just off the tree, but they're really puckery. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, our, our, uh, childhood myth was that if you ate a chokeberry, you'd choke to death. So uh, we didn't. We left. We left them all for the birds. And I'm not sure if this is the same 
Um, now this was taken this, this fall. I'm not sure if this is the same plant or not, but uh, yeah. back yeah, in January nice. 2002, we had that nice little ice storm. That's called the frozen chokeberry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the official name. Oh, okay, good. I'll remember that, Dick. <laughs> that's great. Um, the one thing I can't figure out is this was taken in Lawrence and we were in, living in Overland Park, obviously. And I'm trying to figure out why in an ice storm like this, I drove to Lawrence to take a picture. <laughs> well, you know, the, the sign on the building, I would think says Kaplan's and that was on the plaza. This, I'm pretty sure this was at over, taken over at Lawrence on the okay. main track through Lawrence. Would this be on 23rd street maybe? I don't, I don't know the streets in Lawrence, but I know it's on the, that main street that, yeah, that'd be uh, what 23rd. I consider the main street. <laughs> so. mm -hmm. I like that picture. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, oh, I always like the, the snow. I, did, I don't like being out in the snow and the ice, but I like the, the photos that I can take of it. And this one was taken on um, the, the um, it's a trail between Quivira Park and Westgate Park. And it goes behind uh, um, some commercial buildings and then it kind of wanders off. And, and I just saw these weeds. And of course, of course, I don't know anything about what kind of weed they are. Yeah, the, uh, the, plant, the, the brown uh, things on the, that brown plant is teasel. 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 Hmm. Uh, I think it's T-E-A-S-E-L. They're very prominent on the uh, roadside. Yeah, I think they're I very thought, pretty. I really like them. Yeah, I, I liked them too. I, I just think they were very attractive. So I made my wife stop for about the hundredth time on that on that hike to, so I could mm -hmm. take a picture. But I think those are called choke weeds. <laughs> <laughs> if you tried to eat them, they would be. Yeah, I guess you don't want to eat these ones either. I've given you pictures of all the things not to eat when you go out hiking. <laughs> Okay, now I'll pass it over to Paul. Okay, I only have two photos for today, and both of them were taken on the Flint Hills Nature Trail, oh, wow. um, which right now starts in Council Grove and goes east to, I think it may go all the way to Ottawa. Um, it's an interesting trail because it's, um, well, strangely enough, because it's flat, and it's open to um, not only hikers, but um, cyclists and horses as well, um, mm. which I did not see any of those on the trip. And um, so the trail itself really isn't that interesting, but you get some really nice side views of stuff. And I posted th this one and the next one um, where I'm looking off to the side, obviously, at some of the leaves and everything like that. And I've been experimenting with using different Photoshop filters for various things. And I find that when I take pictures of plants or, or in, take pictures of scenes in the fall in particular, there's an oil paint filter, which really does a nice job of cleaning up some of the busyness that otherwise might be in the photo. Paul, I was going to tell you that I'm, I'm fascinated by the, uh, the, the curvature of everything. Yeah, it brings, the, and this particular oil paint filter with the right settings brings that out. Yeah, I, uh, I like the little wispy white lines. Yeah. I, I don't I imagine that it's uh, grasses or vines or whatever. Vines, yeah. dead vines. Yeah. What did Very, you call them? Dead vines. Dead vines, oh yes. <laughs> The There's another technical term. Yeah. There, there could be, but these are the vines that have deceased. But they hung on. They're pretty. Yeah. And yeah. one in the middle um, is also spiky. The, uh, the trail itself is built as one of those rails to trail, <laughs> trails, if you will. So it's built on the railroad right of way. And mm. it's perfectly straight. So if you want um, a nice trail that has lots of variation and elevation, this is not it, at least from this end. I think it gets more um, interesting as you go further east, but we actually hiked 
about five miles one way. And on this trail, there's, there's an interesting area that has some old ruins, including an arch. And it turns out that that particular area was, um, was the home for a colony of Italians at the uh -huh. end of the 19th century. And I guess the colony died out, but there are all these weird, very impressive looking buildings or structures, uh -huh. a huge barn, what well, must have been a huge barn at one point. And I thought about posting some of those, maybe I'll save some for another time. <laughs> Jonathan, or I'm sorry, Paul, what, uh, what was the, uh, oh, what I wanna say, the, the filter that you put on there to- um, If you're using Photoshop, it's the oil paint filter. Oil paint filter. Okay. Yeah, and it used to be not very useful, but in the latest version of Photoshop, they've really worked on it and it's a very useful filter. Yeah, it's very tell romantic me, look to it. Yeah, tell me one more time the name of the trail. Um, it's called um, the Flint Hills Nature Trail. Oh, okay. And, um, it's supposed to go, and I forget, quite a bit west, but it doesn't right now. Um, Council Grove is the starting starting point. So, my son and his and my three grandkids uh, that he has, and myself went on this trail. It was about two weeks ago when we had all that wind, so it was kind of wow. hard to get good pictures with all that wind. But it was a fun fun hike, and so t in total we did about ten miles. Wow! wow. And uh, it'd be a great place if you're a cyclist and maybe not skilled in riding at a particular point because at least this end of the trail is, is completely flat and straight. So <laughs> if, for me, it'd be great if I had a bike, if I had a cycle. I, I like the, the texture of the, of the picture. I, yeah, I like yeah, a lot. Yeah. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, I don't know if you can. Yes. Oh, I forgot oh, about this is gosh. this is one of the ruins that I was talking about. So and and what struck me, of course, is this uh, this arch. And um, I stopped somebody and asked if they knew about it. And he gave me a little bit of the history of the, the Italian colony that was there. And the arch is, of course, meant to be sort of a Romanesque kind of arch. Mm -hmm. And I, the, the, the original structure must have been huge. And I guess it part of it burnt down and. Um, but it's kind of an inter interesting structure. There's also a uh, memorial to the, the Kansas Indians um, up on a hill, which it was far enough away that we didn't feel like going up there. But, uh, it seemed, and then the next slide, I forget. Okay, what I, it is. That's the only two I had from you, Paul. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I had sent you another one. I had another one showing a, a ravine uh, using that same oil paint filter that I was talking about before. I, I don't think okay. I've got another one. Let me go on and see. It, no, nope. it might be um, because one of the files is was large enough that it might be. Uh, no, I bet I didn't send the other one. No, okay. Well, it was those. These are the two main ones that I wanted to show. Mm, okay. You start in Council Grove. Is this you're going west? You're going east. I'm going east in this yeah right now going west they don't have money to complete that that leg of the trail <clears throat> really quite a long trail it'd take it'd be a good day cycling back and forth but um, my son wants he loves camping and he's going to take his kids and they're going to do the whole trail at some point he was talking about doing it during the winter time but and he asked me if I wanted to go, and I said, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. OK, ready to go on, or any other comments or questions? Um, that's, that's all I have for today. Cool. Anybody know where this is? It's in uh, about 1860. <laughs> <laughs> Four mil. Oh. It's uh, Arabia. It's the no. It's the um, at Fort Scott <clears throat> in the fort. Oh, and if you can sort of read the front of those barrels, they've got coffee and cornmeal and not sure mm -hmm. what else ever else. Salt but, pork up here at the top. Yeah. Flour. Oh yeah, yeah. Flour. I just I just like yeah. the looks of it. So, Salt pork. And yeah, we were there. 
I don't even, it must have been maybe a, a spring or two ago and got in there just in time to uh, listen to him fire off the cannons. And uh, they gave us a little, little tour. So, but I, I just liked the, the looks and texture of this particular uh, room. So I um, took that shot. They have a whiskey barrel? You know, we probably need to check and see. Uh, <laughs> It was Kansas, so I don't know if uh, that would have been legal or not. So <laughs> you just can't open it. Yeah, it would be a sp have a spout, wouldn't it? If it had a liquid. Well, that's true too. Or a, yeah. a bung or whatever. Yeah. Well, and then this one's on the John. Yeah, this was uh, amazing to me to see uh, the dome after it had been restored. Uh, the restoration started in 2001, I believe, and it, and it took till 2014 to finish. So 13 years. And during this time, we learned about <coughs> the concept of scope creep. <laughs> um, because it ended up costing $332 million to do this wow. restoration. Oh, my gosh. And where is that? This is our capital in Topeka. Oh yeah, right. Back. Okay, I have seen that. And yes. it is higher than the U.S. Capitol. Hmm. It's only half of the diameter. Hmm. And do go on YouTube and and there's a there's a walking tour. And you would enjoy this. I beg your pardon. I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Mary. Go ahead. I think Mary just stepped out for a minute. Just, okay. I did. I invited my husband to see this. Oh. <laughs> so there's a walking tour that, that goes to the top, 300 yeah. steps, no elevator. Wow. And um, there's a YouTube video of, of, the, uh, of it. And it's frightening. It's frightening to me. And I'm an old helicopter pilot. Elevations mm -hmm. don't, don't bother me. But to get up inside and see the the engineering that was there that was put in originally and then then the restoration is something else i really do think this is the, one of the if it's not the most beautiful capital in the u.s it is in the top two or three and um I, i'm a little bit uh, the, the calvinist in me objects to a, a, a state spending uh, 330 million dollars just to restore the dome mm -hmm. um but um i'll let you let you think about that well it looks a lot nicer on the inside than it does when you drive by it you know it's got that the outside is sort of this brown metallic look to it and it it's just doesn't appeal to me but the inside's really nice oh, yeah. it is the marble from the area around in here came from Belgium, from the, oh. state, from four, the state of Georgia, the state of Tennessee, from Italy, from Mexico. Hmm. I think the State Historical Society has, is a little bit embarrassed about, about the lavishness, the opulence, <laughs> but um, it is a stunning feature of our state. Yeah, it is beautiful. Okay, I, I want to know, how did you get the shot, John? Did you have to lay down on your back? <laughs> no, and it, it's, not, it's not a good shot, and it was not with my new uh, full-frame camera. It was with a point-and-shoot, and I literally stood underneath it and bent back and, <laughs> and got it. Um, and there are many, many more shots uh, of it that, are, that really do, do justice mm -hmm. to it. Uh, I have a collection of all the state capitals that I've visited, and that's most of them. Um, so I'm, I collect domes, <laughs> pictures of domes. <laughs> wow. I have a whole album of it. So I'm proud of I'm proud of Topeka. I think you should do a workshop on all of the capitals you've visited. Oh yeah, uh, uh, that'd be cool. Uh, I I tell you, you won't believe the uh, the effort to get to these places, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, and uh, to get into them, uh, 
you know, with my, my wife walked into the uh, governor's office in, in Oregon. I mean, he walked literally right, <laughs> right into his office. There was the governor sitting there. Uh, we, I can tell you a lot of stories about our trips to the capitals. <laughs> okay, well, next, next you really one. ought to sometime. We ought to schedule that. <laughs> yeah. So could you advance it? Yes. My, sure. If my next one's coming up. Yeah. This, this is a scene from Fort Leavenworth looking north. Mm -hmm. It's the scene that Henry Leavenworth saw when he came out in 1827 to set up the fort. Wow. It, most of the early mail that came to the fort said Fort Leavenworth, Missouri, but Henry couldn't find a good place on the other side of the river to put a fort, so he put it up on the bluff on, <laughs> on the west side. And it, this is my, this is really um, home to me, uh, Fort Leavenworth. I had many, many years stationed there. And um, I, want, I want to say the significance of this is, is that the bluff that you see on the, uh, on the horizon is uh, Weston Bend State Park. Hmm. And, and that bluff between where we're standing and crosses the Missouri River Valley. And I assumed all my life, having lived on the Missouri River all my life, that the river cut this valley. But that's not the case at all, I, I read. Uh, in some places, the Missouri River Valley is six miles wide. There's no way that the river could have done that. Actually, the, the Missouri River Valley uh, is, was formed both from glaciation and, and uh, mm -hmm. as a result of an ancient inland sea. So yeah. most of these fields around here, you find shark's teeth, <laughs> you know, other kinds of marine things. So, so anyway, the, the Missouri River, how it was formed was much, much later after the valley formed and uh, always been interesting to me. Um, mm. So let's see, what else can I say about, about this scene? Um, I think that's, I th th this was uh, pretty important uh, and it was the objective of the Confederate uh, Army of Missouri that was coming across Missouri they were headed to Fort Leavenworth for, to, to get resupplied. This is during the Civil War, of course. Price, uh, Major General Sterling Price headed to, headed, was headed to Fort Leavenworth. And, and had he been able to do that, of course, it would have, uh, it would have been a, quite a, an accomplishment for the Confederacy. But uh, in the meantime, the Battle of uh, Westport occurred. Price's army was defeated and after that point, Missouri was in, in the Northern uh, re regime then. And, and basically it was the, the, the largest battle west of the Mississippi and the most significant in defeating the Confederate effort. John, so, go ahead. John the, uh, another an interesting element to that is had they made it to Leavenworth, they would have been received very well by the populace. Leavenworth was a very Southern oriented city. A lot of them and Atchison. Uh, that's, that's surprising to me. Uh, my relatives uh, lived in Platte County and, and of course Platte County, Platte County's, uh, uh, the county seat was burned three times by the Union Army. So there were no love for the Union Army in Platte County uh, and, and I can, I can, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that, uh, that there was a uh, union. I mean, that there was, uh, I just always assumed that they were uh, pro-union. Uh, no, not, not at all. There were some, there were some nasty uh, tar and feathering of the Northern supporters uh, by the citizens of Leavenworth. Uh, very interesting. Um, so the next one, the next is a scene uh, south near Caw Point where the Kansas River and the Missouri River uh, have their confluence. Um, if you imagine a, that 
field behind those trees is where the steamboat Arabia was buried and and and, and was excavated. Uh, I am so so proud of the of those uh, brave people who who dug up that steamboat, and I think it's a national treasure. Mm -hmm. um, and that came across there. So you know they're they're likely to move. Um, I hear that from that location. They don't know like, yet, as far as I know, where they're going to move. Probably along the Missouri in more central Missouri. St. Joe is what I heard. I've heard even even somewhere in Ohio. I, they're really uh, looking for the highest bid, and I I'm sorry. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. Lewis and Clark uh, came along through here in, in 1804 and um, came back uh, in September of 1806. Uh, the steamboat Arabia uh, sunk in, in 1856. Uh, the Battle of Westport, which is this is really pretty close to as a crow flies. Um, that was in 1864. Um, and um, today it's a part of uh, English Landing uh, Park in Parkville, and um, it is a really magnificent park that was underwater for months uh, during the last flood, um, but it's, it's supposed to be underwater. Uh, so the trees do fine. They just are fine being underwater for a few months. They lose smaller trees, but it's a it's really as as it was long, long ago. Except for the speed of the of the river through here. Okay, so I, I've talked enough. I I'm uh, I like this uh, winter scene. I was trying to get more water movement with a slower shutter speed and I, I didn't get exactly what I wanted with the flow of the water. It, uh, it looks, it, I kind of froze it in time and I really wanted to see movement there. So I have to go back and do the shot over again. It's winter, it should be frozen, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. thanks. It definitely looks cold. Yeah. Oh. I just wanted to exhibit. Okay, Dick. <clears throat> Southwest of Wichita is a, uh, an area uh, where it produces the most wheat in the state. Um, this is Harper County um, along Highway uh, 160, close to it, uh, which is uh, pretty much a coast to coast highway, by the way. And um, I just liked um, a very natural, normal, every year you see this scene. This is just before they are, are to replant the wheat. Now wheat is usually re, replanted uh, about a month ago. And right now you would see two or three inch high wheat in that, in that field. But the, uh, it's red earth, it's not uh, a different coloration. I like the way it blended with the uh, rusty uh, um, roof of that. Roof, yeah. So this is just a very a scene that you could see anytime you went to Harper County. I love that. Um, yeah, that's all I had to say about it. Okay. I do like it also. Yeah, it's a beautiful scene. I'm sitting by the window from which I took that picture. Um, I have a little dry creek on the east side of my house. Dry meaning it's wet only when it rains heavily. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was morning, so that just struck me as uh, and there was a, a light fog, a little mist up in the trees. Mm -hmm. So that's my artistic effort. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really neat. That's here in DeSoto. Mm -hmm. That's quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, we'll go move. Oh, that's nice. This is also in DeSoto. I don't know if anybody knows anything about Zimmerman's Barn, which is at the uh, Kill Creek and K and uh, K10 <laughs> intersection. This barn uh, is 
had been replaced three times by Daryl Zimmerman and his family. Um, and there are, it's an event center. Um, and so he put this, this up out in the, uh, the, the yard uh, about two years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been, I'd taken two or three um, sunset shots and this is the one I decided to keep. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, your timing was good on it to get a nice, nice glow at sunset. Well, I of course, you realize I took 10 shots before I picked this <laughs> one. <laughs> Appreciate the thought. Yeah. Oh. Anybody oh, tell me where that that's is? A monument, something or other. Yeah, Monument Rock. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a, a favorite place of ours. Um, I especially like the, the needle bush there in front, um, natural red um, grass. It's, uh, <clears throat> I'm on the west side facing east. And there, there are a, a dozen pictures you could have taken there and other people have. <clears throat> and I went through all of them and I, this is my favorite one, so. This is where is Monument Park? Um, at around, uh, but if you let's see, south of uh, Oakley, out on I seventy. Okay. Um, that's highway. I'm not sure which is one of the eighty highway, you know, U.S. highways, um, and uh, right around Scott City, if you head east. Uh, which would be about south of Quinter. Um, it's it's on your state map. Um, and that isn't very far from Hayes, is it? No, no, it's not far from Hayes. A little bit farther west, um, south. That really is the valley of of the Smoky Smoky River, which, as you know, becomes the, the Kansas River eventually. What do you have, Julie? Um, the uh, Nancy Picard's The Sand of Rain and Lightning, which was made into a movie, uh, the book has some uh, very important scenes in this park, uh, but they didn't put it in the movie because they were too cheap to uh, go on location. <laughs> it didn't so, cost anything to go to Monument Rock, it really doesn't. Well, it was so out of the way for, huh. for them. It's really, it's about 10 miles off of the highway, I mean, at most. Yeah, well, the, the, I went I went to the premiere of the movie, and uh, that's what Nancy said about um, they're not filming in uh, in that park. That oh, well, it was east, just too far off for the production company from. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. East of there, about twenty miles is um, oh come on, Castle Rock. Castle. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was the one I think. Okay, the this one I like this one more because it's not solo like like it, so it has more mm -hmm. more contours than uh, that that uh, single Castle Rock does. Yeah. But it's still in the Smoky River Valley. Mm -hmm. Is that a park, Dick? Is that a well, not in the sense that we have, but you can drive to it. Um, you just drive right in. There are no gates. There's no. Uh, it's not built up like the one, the new one, the, the uh, uh, Jerusalem, what is it? Uh, it's on the west side. It's out of Scott City also. Um, and Kathy and I went to it uh, about a month ago. It opened up last year. And uh, they've, they've taken greater efforts to, to build... Um, Oh, an, an observation booth and uh, um, you know, some photographs that uh, that they put under the canopy and uh, you know, and then there are two hiking trails you can take uh, to get different looks at it. Um, so that they've really put some money and effort and time into that. But the, here, Monument Rock and Castle Rock, um, they've done nothing. I mean, it's on private property. They people let you drive in, and it's it's very interesting. Yeah, um, 
I don't know, maybe you talked about this when I was gone, but uh, we referred to the the uh, the sea, the ancient sea that was throughout. Oh, yes. There are yeah. fossils, fossils the, all over the place. Right, yeah. These are layers from the seabed, the, and, uh, and they've been worn down around them, um, right. if I'm not mistaken, because see how even they are? It's not like a, a mountain that, like the Rockies, that's been brought up and, and the layers right. are tilted. Yeah, these have all been cut out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming this uh, like a stratified limestone. Is yeah, probably. probably. Yes. Yeah. Softer and harder materials, uh, the harder ones, of course, remain. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not sure. Is that all I have, John? Jonathan? Uh, I can't remember. Oh, one nope. more. One last. Nothing particularly special about this. This is out around Medicine Lodge. Mm. Um, where there was a uh, historically very important event. Um, there was a, uh, a, a peace treaty with the, uh, with the Indians. And I think it's every other year, alternating years, they do a, um, a trail, right? People sit up on the, uh, in the, uh, on the hillside and you see uh, the military come in, they meet the Indians, they, they reenact uh -huh. uh, Medicine Lodge uh, peace treaty. Uh -huh. It's for fun, Kathy, Kathy and I were first married um, um, in, back in 65, their, grand, their parents took us out to see that and that, it's stuck in my mind uh -huh. and very significant. Uh, but anyway, this has nothing to do with that other than it's nearby in the, in the area. Um, <clears throat> just a grain elevator. I like the little blue doors there on the ground and the blue blue sky. It's just Kansas, Western Kansas, South Central Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> South Central Western Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> so Kathy didn't well, think it was a great one to show everybody, but I just thought it was kind of this way it is. Excellent. Well, it's uh, this is probably still in its state of uh, demolition, but you know, there's a grain elevator up in Lamoni, Iowa, that collapsed recently, and I think you should go up there, Dick, and take some some photos for us so we can see what it looks like. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one is still in 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 functioning order, and the bottom left hand corner, you can see a little house over there. So that's oh yeah. It's a community of about, I don't know, six or eight houses, but it's a, you know, the farmers come in and, <clears throat> and the railroad comes is just, I think I may be just about standing on the railroad tracks. I better get off. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think that's it. Okay. Well, we were talking about that. Uh, These are trilobites, aren't they? We're uh, crino uh, they're crinoids. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Anybody know what this is? Uh, Isn't that at the N Natural History Museum? Yeah, it's at the well. It's at the Sternberg. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Natural History Museum in Hayes, mm -hmm. Kansas, and uh, we were there. I've been through there a couple times, and and I'm always been fascinated by this particular slab of fossils that's mounted up on the wall, and so I, mm. I took a, a photo of that. Yeah, this group of organisms still exists today, by the way. They're not very diverse, but they're still around. Really? Are they, are they very they're, tiny? Are they large? Or they're are, pretty, are they well, you know, they're not huge. They're kind of conven a convenient hand size sort of thing. They're related okay. to starfish. They're in the same phylum. Mm. I always wondered if they were related to jellyfish, but... No, nope, starfish. Not. Yeah. Starfish. Starfish. Oh, okay. yeah. mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm. I always thought going through that museum is fascinating because I always think about what it would be like if we lived back then, uh, which would be kind of a, an impossibility. But it would be interesting to see these kinds of creatures swimming around in the in land. Yeah, actually, you can you can go on YouTube and you find some videos of the ones that are around today swimming. Oh, really? Around. Yeah. I have to do that. Look up crinoids. OK. 
Okay. But I, I just like it. I, I'm a fossil lover from when I was a kid. So anytime yeah. I see a fossil, I, uh, I get excited. Before I long, too. you will be one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am one already. Yeah. Anybody recognize this place? Yeah, um, yeah. Gee, wow. no. <laughs> That's a nice picture. Yeah. Yeah, this is to forewarn you what it's going to be coming like in, in, a, in a little while here. I'm sure we're going to get some heavier snow than what we've had already. Oh, surely. Yeah. Well, but one I, place on campus you need to visit when we have some heavy snow is the tree trail. It's really quite nice with all the snow. Yeah. Try whereabouts now? The tree trail on the campus. Tree trail. Okay, you know, where the, you know where the pond is. Oh, damn. We have a pond? <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> that side, right? <laughs> look. <laughs> All, <laughs> I know the buildings. I don't know much Maybe. outside. <laughs> okay. Maybe we need to have a, a session devoted just to campus. <laughs> yes, that's true. Well, I know. I, I Tell me what side of campus the pond is Let's on. It would be on the south side. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, and so that so then the the tree trail is sort of west of west of there. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Huh. Okay. I'm surprised you don't know that, Jonathan. <laughs> well, I'm either either drawing a blank or I've never seen it. I know all about the little uh, grove of trees on the north side of Kansas uh, mm -hmm. because there are generations of rabbits, wild rabbits, in there yeah. that my mm -hmm. my daughters and I released over there. Oh, at least we assume they're still alive. <laughs> and I think that may be the last photo. Yep. Any questions or comments or? No, no this was nice. Beautiful. Yeah, be very nice. You know, Jay Antley uh, in the history department and another one of his colleagues organized a bus tour of Western Kansas for the faculty. This is about, oh, say 2005. That was through staff development. It was Jay Ample yep. and Johanna. Johanna yes. Foster, yeah. Foster. It was an amazing- What's all going on? That's one of the things they've continued to do. Yeah, well, um, Deb, Deb Williams and Jay do it. I yes. thought I thought James Liker was doing it. So. Liker and and yeah. it, and yeah, it he definitely was, was um, in amazing. It. We had such diversity in in expertise, and and everyone uh, brought their <laughs> best game, uh, so that we as we saw these things, man made and natural, it really did make Kansas much Western Kansas, much more special to me. And that was the point uh, that they were trying to make. Uh, they felt that the faculty needed to have a broader understanding of uh, Western Kansas, that we only knew the Eastern third. Now, the didn't we have about four or five trips in almost one year after the other? Oh, yes. I went on, I went on three of them myself. Actually, it, it started with Jay's wanting to have support to do that. And at the same time, Johanna was working on her application for her sabbatical, which was to capture one of the queen ants that builds the great big mound that populates or fertilizes or whatever it does with the uh, tall grass prairie. And so wow. the two of them got together and worked that out. And then we started doing those. And there were a number of those done. And as I say, I think it's really cool that they're still doing it. Yeah, I think, I think Bob Epp went on one of the early ones uh, and as kind of the official photographer, videographer. And I think there's a, a CD floating around somewhere uh, that they put together afterwards that kind of recorded that, that adventure, so. Well, that would be neat to find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not I ever saw, but that would be neat to find. We usually hung, uh, we usually slept in um, uh, Cottonwood Falls. There, yep. right. yeah. yes. yes. 
And there was a cowboy poet that entertained every year or for the early years. And mm -hmm. some sang. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, that was good. That was fun. I'm going to go back to work. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, well. I don't know if I want to go back to work, but I would like to experience some of those things again. <laughs> <laughs> some of the extracurriculars. But. How many of you are originally from Kansas? I am. I've only lived out of Kansas two years of my life. I always came just back. Just a couple of us. Huh. Have well, you I was born in Leavenworth. Yeah. <laughs> I was born in Manhattan. Ah, cool. Yeah, have you always lived in Kansas? Yes, I was born in Ottawa. And parents sold the farm and moved to Kansas City, and and uh, I grew up in Wyandotte County. Mm -hmm. um, and as quickly as I could, I came to Johnson County. <laughs> 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 Actually, we got here when Johnson County was farms. Yeah. My dad, when my dad first came to Kansas City, um, uh, he, he was in Johnson County working for a dairy. The dairy is about a half mile right now from Shawnee Mission North High School, wow. just east of um, Metcalf. Um, wow. And he, that, he had quite, quite experiences. I ended up writing a, a family history, mm -hmm. uh, largely on his experiences. He was a Navy man, John. <laughs> a lot of Navy men from Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he was unwilling. He was 32 when he was drafted. <laughs> but you'd have to read the book to understand that. So, Mary, did you? where did you always live? Well, I lived in Manhattan, Kansas. The whole time? Uh, went to Lawrence for one year of college as a freshman. Went back to K-State. Uh, lived at home to go on to K-State. Uh, was married and moved to Kansas City. <laughs> in 1961 and we lived in Cloverleaf Apartments because there were almost no places to live in apartments, which is, uh, those apartments are still there. They're between Shawnee Mission North and Shawnee Mission Parkway. There's a bunch of two-story houses. Or, and then I uh, bought the first house in Fairway, uh, was divorced and went back to Case Manhattan and got two degrees and stayed there with my Helping out older parents and having daughters go to school in Manhattan. And then I took a job in at Texas A&M after I was a temp at K-State in the English department for two and a half years. They wouldn't hire me full time because they didn't. They wanted new blood to come in. And so I was a temp. But I went to A&M for one reason. Uh, I'd never been there when I took the job but I had a daughter going to University of Texas and I could get her in-state tuition being in the Texas system. Mm -hmm. And I would have stayed there forever. That was a fine place and a wonderful experience, but I married a man who wouldn't move out of Kansas City. <laughs> and I'm still married to him 35 years later. <laughs> so I guess that was a good choice. Very um, curious, when were you at A&M? Because that's where I went to undergraduate school. I was there in 83, 84. Oh, no. Starting so. 85. I was, uh, well, it was very interesting. And I was glad to have had that experience. It's unlike any school I've ever heard of before. But it was 19 years after they accepted women. I was in the wow. first class that accepted women. Okay. What year was that then? 1969. Okay. So you're a pioneer. Sort of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the only school my father would agree for me to attend. <laughs> Had he attended there? Oh, no. He, uh, he was determined. This was 1969, so he wanted to make very sure that I didn't go to the University of Texas. That was uh, the hippie school. Uh, Where your daughter <laughs> went, right? Yes, my daughter went to UT and met a husband from Texas, and so we kind of lost her. Uh, you know, if you let kids go away to school, they may never come back. 
Yeah. But um, they've been there various places, but they are residing in Austin again to raise children. Um, you know, my dad went to KU in 1925. Wow. He and his brother, they were raised in Coffeyville. And um, his stories about being a freshman in 1925 are treasures, and I've written that down. They lived in a boarding house. <laughs> uh, and the two of them got there at age 18 and 16 wow. because my dad had failed first grade and his brother had jumped eighth grade. So they were in the same class through high school. That's another story. But um, so he uh, thought it was fine for me to go to KU. I already had a sister that graduated there because of a certain curriculum. My mother kept saying, this is a perfectly good school right here in Manhattan. I don't understand. But, um, <laughs> my dad was only there for a semester because in 1925, November, his father died of complications of the 1918 flu. Oh, so my dad went back home to help support and raise a mother and four brothers that were younger mm -hmm. and in Coffeyville. So in 36, he moved to Manhattan, Kansas to start his own business as a furniture salesman. And that's how we ended up there. But um, now with our blended family, we have had uh, five graduates no, I guess four graduates of K-State, my husband twice and me twice. And um, we've got a sophomore and a freshman for K-State. They're now living in dorms in hibernation oh, is yes. what we call it. They're hibernating there. So but, my question for Charlie is, so where, what state were you uh, from? I grew up in Chicago. Oh, did you? Okay. <clears throat> Specifically Hyde Park. So I'm very yeah. proud of being right in Chicago. Yeah, I know Hyde Park. Yeah. yeah. So how did you get to Kansas City, Charlie? Oh, wow, that's convoluted. Um, <laughs> Mary will appreciate this. My roommate in Chicago's father was an economic instructor at K-State. Oh. And a guy that she went to high school with came to visit her while we were still roommates, which happened to be a couple of months before I moved to San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> so he was living uh, it's crazy although he was from Manhattan he had taken a job with Xerox and was living in Omaha which was my first stop from Chicago to San Francisco yeah, yeah. and my roommate also a Mary said you know he's a friendly guy you're going to be there overnight he'll take you to dinner call him up and the rest as they say is history but <laughs> anyway I moved to San Francisco uh, I was out there for a while. His dad was a uh, councilman in um, Manhattan. What was the name? I'm trying to remember his first name. Okay. Wallace Kidd mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was the last name. Um, and uh, he got so busy doing all of that that he was running a business, which escapes me now what he was, what he did, and asked his son to come back and run it. And I followed him back. But... I did a little research and it was like, I am not living in Manhattan. I mean, I'm a Chicago girl for gosh sake, you know? <laughs> and so I, I lived in Topeka, which wound up being close enough that we did fine. But then we split up and I moved to Kansas city. Now, if you followed all that, you're very good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, why did you not want to live in Manhattan? <laughs> uh -oh, uh -oh. It was just too small. I thought, yeah. and I had not yet come to appreciate the charms of a college city. Well, I, said, would, right. I would do it today at a heartbeat. Right. there, right. It adds a certain culture to us. It really a small does. city, very yeah. much so. And my mother was uh, very, when we were children, we went to the performers at the visit to K-State, even presidential visits and things. She saw that we got that, even though we were younger, we got to see Margin Gower champion, Harry Belafonte wow. in their uh, stage performances and many others. But um, Manhattan now itself and the Flint Hills is uh, the Chamber of Commerce is uh, publicizing that Manhattan is a retirement place that you need to check out. Mm -hmm. National Golf Course. A lot of people from Fort Raleigh that had been stationed there like to come back because it's a 
a small town mm -hmm. and um, good education. Public schools were great. We had the best uh, student teaching uh, experiences with classrooms, you know. Most classrooms also had a practice teacher from K-State. It was, it was a good deal. And my girls liked that too. They did not want to let the, leave there when I had planned to leave earlier my, and drag them across the country to do a different job. But um, nope, it's a good place. But my, the other thing that people think is strange is my mother rented my bedroom to a K-State girl when I went to live at a dorm at KU. And it was <laughs> entirely economic to pay my dorm bill. Yeah. Uh. Oh. And there was shortage of housing at that time at K-State. So when I went back as a sophomore to K-State, she was my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> my parents' house <laughs> out on campus. So it's, you know, nice gal. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's funny. Are you still in touch with her? Uh, actually, she moved to Australia some years after being married. She was from Larned, Kansas. And I named my first daughter for her. The name, the first name. Uh huh. No, I'm not in touch with her anymore. I don't, I'm not sure she's alive. That's the advantage of being able to search for people. Is that well, you, know, you can. At I least guess so. Yeah. You know, I'm not a computer person. <laughs> Those who know me know I'm not. So I'd have to hire one of you to do the search. Mm -hmm. Jonathan would be very good at that. You know, I enjoy this very much, and I'm sorry that I get get my pictures sent in. Uh, if you'd ever do this again, I would. I have a daughter that lives in the Flint Hills, married to a Kansas farm kid, and we've had, had a lot of photography from the Flint Hills that my husband's taken. And uh, the other thing I wished I had sent in was the gorgeous flowers in this city. Oh, yeah. And we, I, we have many of those and um, kind of hidden treasures, you know, and you don't have to go far and you can eat lunch out. And Mary, you raise, and a, you raise a topic, Mary, that we, um, Jonathan and I continually asking what should be the next focus, so to speak, with a camera. Definitely focus. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, any ideas? anybody has about what would be fun to explore with your cameras? I just participated in what I thought was a really interesting session that was put on by the Parks and Rec 50 plus program. And it was a tour of the Rose Garden at Loose Park. It was very well done and very interesting. Was it on Zoom or in live? It was on Zoom. Okay, I've just spent 10 years and got a, a, a special pin for 10 years of service at Loose Park Rose Garden. Well, they talk about as a groomer, all, all their and are. The and reason for that is that I, don't, I have a shady yard. So my 3,000 rose bushes are over at Loose Park. Oh. And I've enjoyed spending uh, every Thursday morning there five months of the year. And um, I could take you on a tour. All right. <laughs> Mary, are you, Mary, are you a master gardener? I am in Johnson County. Well, I was going to laugh when you said why I didn't like Manhattan. I said, what, what I was going to add is ours is now a house divided because my husband went to KU Law. And right. so, since retiring from the college, I went through the master food program with K-State. Good. Good. <laughs> so my wardrobe has a lot of purple in it now. <laughs> I've always had a lot of purple, but uh, no, the master gardening that I've done is since 2015, and it's a joy to me. Yeah, I'm very lucky I found it, and in between various other things going on in my life, I still go back. In fact, tomorrow is the last session of master gardening for Shawnee Town Herb Garden, weather permitting. <laughs> uh, we don't like to be out there below 40 degrees. Yeah, it's supposed to be nice tomorrow. At eight o'clock in the morning? I'm uh, not well, sure. Maybe not. Let's see. <laughs> Back to the original question. <clears throat> yes. I think people would be interested in the highlights of our places in Kansas City. 
photography wise. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the places I thought about was the Overland Park Arboretum. Yes. And, I mean, that'd be, there's some beautiful photography opportunities there too. Right. right. Jonathan, what do you think about Kansas City? Did we do that already? It doesn't well, we, we did something similar to it, but, uh, you know, we haven't done anything on, on gardens and arboretums. I wonder if that should be the next one. Yeah. Well, we even have statues, you know, that not everybody's seen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jerry, you also have a collection of wildflowers from Colorado that I remember seeing the pictures of long ago. Hmm. Wonderful. And oh, who is that? I don't know what I'm talking about. Jerry Beard. Yes, uh. we do have we do have some of those in our yard and and uh, which we enjoy and and there's just a well, yeah. Another place I thought about was, oh gosh, and I was trying to remember the name of it. It's uh, down south, south of Kansas City. There's a, you know, that big garden down there that's. Uh, oh, Powell Gardens. Powell Gardens, yes. It's out east. That's yeah. A, that's yeah, nice. east. Yep. Really nice as well. Well, you know, in a couple more weeks, it might be colder and wetter and more white out there. Maybe it'd be a good time to do something on gardens and arboretums and statuary and anything yeah. related. I think that sounds better for spring because uh, these gardens go dormant, you know, through well, I'm, I'm thinking about pretty quick. You know, but I'm thinking people probably have photos from the past. Oh, right. Right. It might and be even a uh, nice way winter. to spice up the, the winter. Yep. Yep. The luminary walk at the Arboretum at Christmas time is certainly something you should yes. have on your agenda if you haven't gone to that. Yes. And it's, they're going to have, a, in fact, I just read the dates today. I don't remember what they were, but there was an article in the paper that to mention there are four different dates coming up where they're going to have that luminary walk. Oh, they are. Yeah. Huh. Well, I suppose because it's outside, you could yeah. still distance it. There was a good walk for uh, Christmas lights out off of 95th Street in Alexa last year at a big park, city park, uh, that we attended more than once. Um, you know, I don't know that you know, but I'll just tell you, Master Gardener Program in Johnson County is done through the Horticulture Program at K-State. The instructors come from there to, um, and now it's on Zoom. I was fortunate to be ahead of that, but we maintain eight gardens as educational gardens and beauty gardens in Johnson County. And I hadn't known they were all there, but, um, and then we select those that we wish to work at often, I mean, on a weekly schedule, but um, we've added two more gardens this year that are maintained by master gardeners. One is it's at 67th and Row, which is uh, where a church was taken down. There's now a Prairie Village Park that has yeah. a garden. And then there's one out off of Neiman, north of where um, Wonderscope used to be. Mm. And its uh, focus is Brittany. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, oh. Is the theme. So there's more just for free go looking at, you know, and learning at. The point of it is, this is what's happening in Johnson County. A lot of people don't know it. Yeah, yeah. Well, very good. Well, I folks, we're, we're a little over an hour yeah. in this chat. So um, we should probably call it uh, a day. <laughs>